Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Kitty. Hello, Matt. <laughs> well, how you like my new buggy, Matt? That's a nice rig. Nice. It's a beauty. Yeah, it sure is. Doc took me for a drive up the Arkansas ways, Matt. This buggy ride's about as easy as anything I was ever in. Yeah, it's okay. For summer. Sure, it's okay. Well, what do you mean, for summer? Well, you can't drive that thing around in the snow, can you, Doc? You wouldn't even get out of Dodge with it. Come snow, I'm not leaving, Doc. I never saw weather stop you yet, Doc. But don't pay any attention to the marshal. He's just talking because he'd like to have one. I wouldn't even get into one of them unless I had a busted leg. Oh, 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 listen, oh, oh, I don't know why we stopped to talk to him at all, Kitty. And besides, I thought you were supposed to have left town, Matt. I'm leaving right now, Doc. What? Huh? Where are you going, Matt? Uh, Chester and I are riding over to a place called El Cater. What for? A well, word came in that Kerry Post is holed up over there. Kerry Post? I never heard of him. He's a killer from the Dakota Territory. El Cater's as far south as he's ever come. I don't know him, Kitty. All I got is his picture on a wanted poster. Oh, hello, Marshal. Hello, John. Uh, I was in El Cater once, Matt. Oh, it's a nice little town. Yeah, so I've heard. At least if you've never been there, nobody knows you. And you can ride in free and easy. And... That ought to help some. Yeah, it will, Kitty. A lot. Good luck, Matt. Thanks, Kitty. I'll see you when I get back. So long, Matt. I swear, Mr. Dillon, this old cater's duster and dodge is. I, I, I couldn't hardly see to breathe out there in the street. You couldn't what? I can't do nothing but think about a glass of beer. <laughs> well, what do you have, gentlemen? Uh, you got any beer? Well, of course we have. Well, that's a delight to hear. Make it too, bartender. Okay. Hey, who's this fella coming over, Mr. Dillon? Hey, you men are strangers here, ain't you? Yeah, we are. Of course you are. I've lived here all my life, man and boy. And I ain't never seen neither one of you. Well, I guess that explains our never having met. Well, uh, Grimes is my name. Cicero Grimes. I, I ain't asking you, Earth, now don't get me wrong. Oh, we haven't got anything to hide. My name's Dylan, and this is Chester Proudfoot. How you do? Welcome to El Cater, gentlemen. And I'll tell you something else. You buy me a beer, and I won't ask you no questions, but I'll talk to you. Providing you're honest, of course. I won't talk to no crooks. <laughs> well, we're pretty honest, Grimes. Cicero will do. Okay. A bartender, uh, will you make that three beers, huh? Well, I thank you, Dylan. And uh, you too, uh, uh, Chester. Chester. Oh, well, Cater's a pretty lively town, huh, Cicero? Well, it was and it ain't. What? It was lively and it ain't no more. Oh, oh. Well, why is that? Joe Fye. He done it. Come here two weeks ago and there ain't been a fight since. Yeah, three beer. Uh, here you are, bartender. Uh, tell me about this Joe Fye, Cicero. 
Oh, Joe Fry, don't bother me none, Dylan. I'm a peaceful man. I don't even carry a gun. It's the wild ones. Fellas like Carrie Post and such all that Joe Fye gets after. Did you say Carrie Post? Is it, Chester? It's all right. Carrie Post ain't here anymore. No Joe Fye run him out of town right off. He run three other fellas out, too. Oh, what for? Because he won't stand for no disorder, that's why. And they was all gunmen, too. Yes, sir, bad. Carrie Post, he said he'd wait till somebody shoots Joe Fye, and then he's coming back. Now, this Joe Fye must be quite a gunman himself, huh? <laughs> ain't none better. Ain't a man in the whole country that'll stand up to him. Oh, is that so? Yeah, been here two weeks. Nobody's faced him yet. Well, if nobody ain't faced him, how do you know he's such a good gunman? Well, you'll find out, Chester, when you see him. Uh, it don't make sense to me. What's his game, Cicero? Why does he want to run El Cater? It's his job, Dylan. His job? Well, sure. That's what they sent him here for. Well, who sent him? The government. What? Oh, maybe I didn't tell you. Joe Fye's a United States Marshal. He's a what? He's a U.S. Marshal. What's wrong with that? What? Cicero, maybe you don't know it, but there's only one U.S. Marshal in this whole territory, and he's standing right... Hold it, Chester. Uh, we'll find out what's going on here soon enough. Yes, sir. Meantime, don't worry about Joe Fye, huh? He isn't after you. No, no, he won't bother you none, Chester. But Dylan here, that's different. What do you mean? Well, Dylan looks like a gunman to me. And if there's one thing Joe Fye won't stand for around here, it's a gunman. Yes, sir. He's going to run Dylan right out of town first time he lays eyes on him. is high in every Chesterfield you buy. The nicotine is low and we can show the reason why. We analyze tobaccos, we experiment and test. So when you're buying Chesterfields, you know you buy the best. Chesterfields for me, Chesterfields for me. You just say it's Chesterfields for me. Your best cigarette buy today is Chesterfield. There's Chesterfield king size at the new low price. And for your convenience, Chesterfield Regular. What a pair. Either way, you get the taste and mildness you want. A refreshing smoke every time. Either way, you get highest quality, low nicotine. Buy a carton of Chesterfield. They're best for you. Chester was right. I was the only U.S. Marshal in that part of the country. So who or what Joe Fye was, I had no idea. But I figured if I kept quiet and waited around a while, I might find out. So Chester and I went over to the one restaurant in town and filled up on hogback and pinto beans and then found ourselves some shade on the boardwalk facing the main street and sat down. We hadn't been there long when a man dressed in a fine suit of buckskin and wearing a big white John B. Stetson crossed the street and came up to us. He had one gun tied to his hip and another stuck in his belt. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello. Don't believe I've seen you men in El Cater before. No, we've never been here before. Staying along? I hadn't thought about it, one way or the other. You know who I am? Marshal Fye, isn't it? Good. You've already heard of me. Yeah, we have. And that'll save us time. Gentlemen, I don't like gunmen here. I ain't no gunman. I was thinking more of your friend than you. Now, you move in pretty fast, Marshal. I mean business, gentlemen. You make trouble here and I'll kill both of you. What? Many a man has died who was a little slow believing me, mister. You killed a lot of men, huh? Everyone that's ever crossed me. And how many is that? I don't keep count. Doesn't matter. No, I don't guess it does. Say <laughs> now. Oh, Here comes a fellow looking for pleasure. Yeah, he sure is. 
I won't tolerate that. You're going to stop him? If I have to kill him. Oh, no, you can't do that. Wait a minute, Chester. Hmm, must be friends of his. They're shutting him up. They just told him. See, they're pointing over here at me. The man doesn't know. He hasn't been to town since I took over. Well, he sure calmed down fast enough. There he goes, mild as milk. You should thank those men for that. They just saved his life. It's a pretty tight town you keep, Fife. It's a marshal's job, isn't it? Well, you're the marshal. Don't you forget it, either of you. I trust you've learned what'll happen if you do. Yeah, I got a pretty good idea. Marshal? No man's dared fight me yet. I know. I heard. And don't forget it. Good day. So long. Well, of all the blowed up, mean hog headed men I ever saw. You know, I don't know whether it's his being smart or everybody else around here being stupid, but it's sure working, Chester. How do you mean? He's got them all buffaloed. He hasn't had to fight once. Just see how he handled that cowboy. He let those other men do his work for him. And with us, he waited till he was sure we knew about his reputation before he got tough. You mean you don't think he's a gunman at all? I don't know what he is, Chester. But I got an idea how I might find out. How? I'll show you. And if I can take care of Joe Fry, then all I have to do is sit here and wait for Kerry Pulse to ride back to town. The first thing I did was to go to the general store and buy an old Navy pistol. It wasn't much of a gun, and for $5, the storekeeper threw in a worn-out holster and a cartridge belt. He tried to sell me some ammunition, too, but uh, I was afraid the pistol might go off by accident and blow up if anybody was to carry it around loaded. But from there, we went back to the Alamo Saloon and spent the next two hours talking to Cicero Grimes. This time, I told him who I was. And after I explained the whole deal to him a couple of times, he seemed willing to sit in. Well, there's only one thing I don't like about it, Marshal Dillon. Oh, what's that? Well, supposing you guessed it wrong. Supposing Joe Fry is something of a gunman after all. Oh, don't you worry about that, Cicero. I'll be right there. Well, it could still go wrong, and if it does, I'll get shot. Well, that's the chance you're taking to help the law, Cicero. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Man, you get paid for taking chances, Marshal, and I don't. No, you don't. But there is one thing. You'll be the kind of hero after. Say, I will, won't I? Oh, everybody will be buying you drinks from here on out, Cicero. Why, you'll be famous, like George Washington and all them fellas. Yeah. Say, that's uh, kind of getting paid, ain't it? Sure it is. Hey, Marshal. Yeah. How come you picked me out for this job? I'm a pretty worthless sort of fella. Oh, no, you're not, Cicero. Uh, maybe you don't do much but just sit around in here and sponge drinks off everybody, but you ain't worthless. Right now, Cicero, you're the most important man in El Cater. Oh, Marshal, you're just talking. There's lots of fellas could help you out. No, no, there aren't. You're the one man in town that's least expected to stand up to Joe Five. Uh, you've never even worn a gun before. I yeah, sure ain't. I don't believe in guns. Well, don't you see? This way we'll really show him up, huh? Well, I guess you're right, Marshal. And I sure hope nothing bad happens. Well, I promise you that I'll do everything I can, Cicero. But on a deal like this, something can always go wrong. I'm not going to try to fool you about that. You know, that's what I like about you, Marshal. You don't try to hide nothing from me. Are you all set, then? I guess so. But I feel sort of funny with this gun on my hip. Well, you look fine, Cicero. Well, let's get going. Now, you know what you're going to do now, huh? Yeah, I got it all, Marshal. At least I think I have. Well, don't think too hard. Just let it happen. It'll come to you once you get started. Sure, yeah, I'll do that. I'll just let it happen. Well, go ahead, then. We'll follow you. Okay. Uh, Cicero... Quite a fella, ain't he, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he sure is, Chester. Hope I'm right about this. I'd hate to see him get hurt. Or killed. Okay, get up there and do a shooting for him, Chester. And then come on back before anybody sees you, huh? Yes, sir. Come on out, we'll play 
Skippy, Marshal. Skippy! Hey, where are you, Pie? Out of your hole. Come on, Pie. That's All right, that's enough, Chester. That's enough shooting. Come on back. Yeah, you're scared. That's what's the matter with you. There he comes, Mr. Yeah. Dillon. Come right across the street. Come on yeah. What's going on here? What's the matter with you, Cicero? Ain't nothing the matter with me, Marshal Pye. What are you doing with that gun? Take it off. Take it off, I said, before I kill you. Go ahead, Pye. Go on. Kill me if you think you can. You didn't know about me, did you? I'll show you who's a gunman around here. You must be drunk talking like that. It'd be better for you if I was drunk, but I ain't. I always do my gunfighting plumb sober. You going crazy? I'll tell you something, Joe Pye. The reason I spend so much time in the saloon there is to forget about all the men I killed. Sometimes I can't forget. And then I got to put my gun on and go out and kill me another. And... He ain't making much sense, Mr. Dillon. It doesn't matter, Chester. Let him talk. You're drunk and you're lying. Oh, am I? Get your hand away from that gun, Cicero. I'm warning you. Well, I can't shoot without pulling my gun out, can I? You're not going to shoot anybody. Especially me. Yeah, sure I am. I am. I just told you. I got I to gotta do it, Pa. I, I, I'm sorry for you, but, but I, I got I to gotta do it. I've had enough of this. Cicero, you get your hands up before I kill you. No, 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 no you don't. Now, stay, stay away from me. I never saw a man so eager to die. Now, do as I say. No, I won't do nothing, you say. You can't hurt me. You don't know it, but you can't hurt me at all. I can kill you. Now, go ahead. Go ahead, try it. Go on. Draw. There's no man in the world can beat me, and you know it. I don't know it. I never even seen you shoot. Nobody has. But you're just about to see me. For the last time, take your hand off that gun. <laughs> now, watch me, Fire. Watch me. I'm just about to draw. I'm about to draw, everybody. Go on, shoot him, Cicero, and get it over with. Okay, I will. Yes, sir, that's what I'll do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. No. Don't pull that gun. Don't, Cicero. Don't worry. I'll, I'll make it easy for you, Fire. I'll shoot you in the head so you won't suffer so much. Right in the nose, maybe. No, no, don't. No, 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 that, now, now, you see, there, there, now, I, I, I got you covered. I, why, why, you didn't even try to draw. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Don't shoot, Cicero, don't shoot me. I'm going to, I'm going to. I, I wouldn't draw on you. I was only fooling. Yeah, sure, yes, sir. <laughs> he was only fooling. But you're all through fooling now, Joe High. Here, I'll take those guns of yours. First this one. Now, throw it away. And then I'll take this and do the same thing. <clears throat> there. Come on out, everybody. I got your lion tamed. What do you do? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, everybody. Look at here. My gun ain't even loaded, see? Oh, you yes, sir. You're all through here, Joe Five. Go find your horse and ride him out of town. You ain't no U.S. Marshal anyway. You've been lying the whole time. Now, get going. Wait here, Chester. I want to talk to Five. Oh, wasn't up to do it, man. Y'all got taken in by windbag, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Wait a minute, Five. I'd like to talk to you a minute. Leave me alone. Haven't they done enough? I'm not going to hurt you. Yes, you are. You're a gunman. And I talked rough to you today. Now you're going to... Wait a minute, Five. I only want to ask you a couple of questions and then you can go. Ask me what? About this U.S. Marshal business. Was that your idea? I mean, were you alone in this, or did somebody put you up to it? Well, all my life, I've wanted to be a lawman. Oh? Huh? Why? I don't know. Maybe so as everybody sort of look up to me. But I knew it couldn't last long. I knew something would happen sooner or later. Well, if you wanted to be a lawman, why didn't you go be one somewhere? 
Why did you come here and lie about it? You don't understand. I couldn't be a lawman, not a real one. Well, why not? Well, you saw what happened with Cicero Grimes. Yeah, I saw it. I'm a coward, mister. That's what I am, a coward. Always have been. I couldn't be a marshal, not for long. That'd take somebody... Somebody like you, maybe. You could be a marshal. Maybe. But you're saying the only reason that you came here and told everybody you were the law was just a kind of a game you were playing? Sort of like a kid? Like a kid. I guess you're right. What do you care about me? Well, I thought you had some other reason for wanting to run this town. Oh, no. No, I'm not a crook, mister. I, I never did anything bad. I believe you, Fire. Where are you from, anyway? Boston. Boston? A long time ago. I ran away when I was 15. I see. I want to go now, mister. I want to get out of this place. Okay. No offense, but I sure hope I never run into any of you people again. I understand. But there is one thing, Fi. What? You go on wearing guns and somebody's going to kill you for sure. I never wore a gun in my life till I came to al -Qaeda. I always wanted to, but I never dared. You know, it was kind of fun while it lasted. Yeah. So long, Fi. So long, mister. <laughs> What a pair. What a buy. They're talking about Chesterfield king size at the new low price. And Chesterfield regular, America's most popular two-way cigarette. Maybe you've noticed in recent weeks how many king size smokers are changing to Chesterfield. In sizing up the king size situation, it's a fact that today you get more value from king size Chesterfield than from any other king size cigarette. What a buy. Chesterfield gives you highest quality, low nicotine. You get the taste you want, the mildness you want. A really refreshing smoke every time. Chesterfield King Size is the one and only premium quality King Size cigarette. Buy a carton at the new low price. Get highest quality with Chesterfield King Size. Highest quality with Chesterfield Regular. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. What, Chester? We've been here in El Cater most a week now, and that carry post ain't showed up yet. How do you know but what he went back to Dakota Territory? Well, maybe the word about Joe Fi hasn't got to him yet, Chester. But we can't wait much longer. Well, morning, Marshal. Now, it's Dylan, Cicero. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting. How are you, Cicero? Fat as a fall hog. Say, you know, you fellas was right. Everybody, even the stranger's been doing nothing but buying me drinks and listening to my story. <laughs> but don't worry, Marshal. Or I, <laughs> I mean, Dylan. I'm real careful about what I tell him. Oh, you're doing fine, Cicero. Say, you know something else? The bartender at the Alamo has hung that old Navy pistol I use over the bar. I guess it's kind of famous already. Well, it ought to be. It made the whole town of El Cater ashamed of itself for getting took in, so... Yes, sir, that's what the bartender says. That's why he put it there. To make him remember, he says... My goodness alive. The fellow's sure raising a lot of dust. What's he in such a hurry for? Well, that, that's... Uh, he must have... Yeah, I see him, Cicero. What is it, Mr. Dillon? It's Carey Post, Chester. You two stay out of the way now. Not me, I ain't. No, I'm going to watch this. Then you sit right there, Cicero. What he means is don't follow him. Hello, Post. I don't know you. You've been a long time getting back to town. What are you talking about? 
Now, Joe Fry left a week ago. He had your buffalo, didn't he? Now, look here. Shut man. up. This may upset you some, Post, but I'm a real marshal. What? Matt Dillon from Dodge. I've been waiting for you. No. And I'm taking you back with me. Before? I, I never even seen you before now. You're wanted for murder in Dakota Territory. And you know something else? I don't expect one bit of trouble out of you. Ah, Marshal. I'm taking your gun, Post. Easy. Just like this. Sure. Sure, Marshal. I wouldn't make no trouble. Take it. I got it. I got back on your horse. We're leaving for Dodge. Oh, Mr. Dillon, that was the easiest thing I ever saw. How did you know he wouldn't fight? Post's nothing but a murderer, Chester. He's not a fighter. Well, you got him. And you got rid of that Joe Fry, too. Him pretending to be a marshal. It was sure worth coming up here. I don't know, Chester. Joe Fry ran this town pretty well. But the lid's off now. And it's too bad I couldn't have left him alone. He was doing fine. <laughs> And M goes king size. Yes, L and M goes king size. Now, L and M is king size as well as regular. Both have the same low price. Both have the miracle tip for the effective filtration you need. Yes, it's the filter that counts. And L and M has the best. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine, a light and mild smoke. Yes, this is it. L and M filters. Just what the doctor ordered. Buy a carton, king size or regular. Both at the same low price. L and M filters. America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Vic Perrin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. of electronics accomplish a lot, but scientific wizardry alone will not do the job. Take, for example, the protective radar screen around our country. It's the best and latest technical equipment, and yet it's full of holes. Plugging these holes is the job of the Ground Observer Corps. Today, you're needed for the defense of your country. Teenagers, men and women of all ages, sign up for the silver wings of the Ground Observer Corps. Be the eyes that guard the blind spots in our aerial defenses. Contact your nearest Civil Defense Center for full information. And remember, next week at this same time, Chesterfield will bring you another transcribed story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.